All right. One less so This one is. Here we go. Voyages in the Underworld by Marcus Sedwick, Julian Sedwick, and Alexis Deacon. Brothers Marcus and Julian Setwick team up to pen this haunting tale of another pair of brothers, caught between life and death of World War II. Harry Black, a contentious objector, artist, and firefighter battling blazes of German bombing in London 1944, wakes in the hospital to news that his brother, Elias, has been killed. In delirium of his wounded state, Harry's mind begins to blur the distinctions between reality of war-torn London, the fiction of his unpublished sci-fi novel, and the myth of Orpheus and Eurydice. Driven by visions of Elias is still alive and a sense of poetic inavailability, Harry sets off in a search for his brother that will lead him deep into the city's underworld. With unworldly paintings by Alexis Deacon, depicting Harry's surreal descent further into the depths of hell, this eerily beautiful blend of prose, verse, and illustration delves into love, loyalty, and the unbreakable bonds of brotherhood as it builds to a fierce indictment of mechanized warfare. In Waves by A.J. Dungo, and this is another beautiful graphic novel. A tale of love, heartbreak, and suffering from an important new voice in comics. In Waves is Craig Thompson's Blankets meets William Finnegan's Barbarian Days. In this virtually arresting graphic novel, Surfer and illustrator A.J. Dungo remembers his late partner, her battle with cancer, and their shared love of surfing that brought them strength throughout their time together. With his passion for surfing uniting many narratives, he intertwines his own story with those of some great heroes of surf in a rare world of nonfiction that is moving, moving as it is fascinating. Next we have Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. Project Runway meets Milan in this sweeping fantasy about a young girl who poses as a boy to complete for the role of Imperial Tailor and embarks on an impossible journey to sew three magic dresses from the sun, the moon, and the stars. Maya Tremaine dreams of becoming the world's greatest tailor in the land, but as a girl, the best she can hope to is for marrying well. When a royal messenger summons for her ailing father, once a tailor of renown, to court, Maya poses as a boy and takes his place. She knows her life is forfeit if her secret is discovered, but she'll take that risk to achieve her dream and save her family from ruin. There's just one catch. Maya is one of 12 tailors vying for the job. Backstabbing and lies run rampant as the tailors complete in challenges to prove their art artistry and skill. Maya's task is further complicated when she draws the attention of the court magician, Eden, whose piercing eyes seem to gaze straight through her disguise and nothing could have prepared her for the final challenge, to sew three magic gowns for the emperor's reluctant bride-to-be, from the laughter of the sun, the tears of the moon, and the blood of the stars. With this impossible task before her, she embarks on a journey to reach the far kingdom, seeking the sun, the moon, and the stars, finding more than she could ever have imagined. Seeped in Chinese culture, sizzling with forbidden romance, and shimmering with magic, this young adult fantasy is pitch perfect for fans of Sarah J. May's or Renee Alliday. Miracle and Tragedy of the Diane Quintuplets by Sarah Miller. It's a non-fiction piece of work. True story. In this riveting, beyond belief, true story from the author of Foreign Murders, meet five children who captivated the entire world. And the Diane Quintuplets were born on May 28, 1934, weighing a grand total of just over 13 pounds no one expected them to live so much as an hour. Overnight, Yvonne, Annette, Cecile, Emily, and Marie Diane mesmerized the globe, defying medical history with every breath they took. In an effort to protect them from huskers and showmen, the Ontario government... Tyler Walters to the high school office, please. The Ontario government took custody of the five identical babies, sequestering them in private custom-built hospital across the road from their family. And then, in a stunning act of hip hypocrisy proceeded to exploit them for the next nine years. The Diane Quintuplets became more popular than the Niagara Falls, googled through one-way screens by scenes, sightseers as they splashed in their wadding pool at the center of a tourist hotspot known, known as the Quintland. Here, Sarah Miller reconstructs their unprecedented upbringing with fresh depth and subtly bringing new light to their resilience and indel 
undeniable bond of their unique sisterhood. And last but not least, Pan's Labyrinth, The Labyrinth of the Fawn, by, I'm going to butcher this, Romero del Toro and Celia Funk. And this is Pan's Labyrinth. Fans of dark fairy tales like The Hazelwood and The Cruel Prince will relish this atmospheric and absorbing book based on Guillermo del Toro's critically acclaimed movie. Oscar-winning writer-director Guillermo del Toro and best-selling author Cornelia Funk have come together to transform del Toro's hit movie Pan's Labyrinth into an epic and dark fantasy novel for readers of all ages, completing with haunting illustrations and enchanting stories that flesh out folklore of this fascinating world. This spellbinding tale takes readers to a sinister, magical, and war-torn world filled with darkly rich characters like trickster fawns, murderous soldiers, child-eating monsters, courageous rebels, and a long-lost princess hoping to be reunited with her family. A brilliant collaboration between masterful storytellers that's not to be missed. And those are the five books for the month. Come and check them out in the library along with many others. Thank you.